Thank you, Lieutenant. Thank you, Lieutenant. Did you get him? No dice. I haven't had him for an hour. Thank you, Lieutenant. Be there soon now. Thank you to Bennett. Thank you to Bennett. Thank you to Bennett. Oh, I ain't so worried. Anything Dick Bennett can fly, he can land. He can't land. We have a ceiling of 300 and a visibility of about six inches. Out in a storm with a sick baby on board. Well, Dick's that kind of a guy. There ain't another guy who can make it. He hasn't made a chance. Oh, he's been in tougher spots than this. You know that. I ain't worried. Any guy that makes a late parachute jumps like you do hasn't got sense enough to be worried. <laughs> Ceiling 300, visibility one-eighth of a mile. Go over to Fort Dover. Short of gas. Going to land. It's like soup down here, Bennett. Keep on the other field. I'm coming through. Get out the gray car. Take care of yourself, honey. Mr. Bennett, I don't know how to thank you. Forget it. Good luck to the little girl. You big phones! No, you scared us to death. You better that check time. up on those motors. They're burning too much gas. Right. Say, I got a great idea for that new plane of yours. Come on, you need some coffee. Hey, hey, how about some service? What do you got to eat? Travel down, I'm coming. We got distinguished company. Don't tell me it's the great Mr. Bennett. Hello, Mary. Hello, what do you have? Coffee. Me too. And don't forget the cream. Right. Oh, you had me scared to death. From now on, there'll be no more flying left the Stanley Cup races. We're taking no chances. Do you really think the plane is ready? I know it is. Gee, this is what we've been dreaming about for years. You fly in the ship that I built. You've got a lot of money into it, Bill. Now, don't worry about that. Well, we got three standing offers for the plans. If we win, we're all set. How does the competition look? <laughs> well, you got a load of the competition parked in our hangar. What do you mean? Oh, a dame barged in with a ship today. I'm telling you, she's got everything on there but a calliope. You know, one of those Miss Millions out looking for a thrill? Why, at the field, they frankly laid out a red plush carpet for her. Who built the plane? Oh, I don't know. It's some sort of a foreign thing. You know, the American era slogan, made in America, spent in Europe? Wait till you see it. Why, well, she's got gold knobs on the controls. With lace curtains on the windows? <laughs> I got ten bucks that she looks like a ham sandwich. Hey, buddy, pass the sugar. What was the idea of that? Compliments from the ham sandwich. Ham sandwich, eh? I'll take that $10 bet. Let me have a napkin, Mary. Oh, what happened? Nothing. And a fresh cup of coffee. I said I'd take that bet. Hey, Carla wants us to go over to the hangar tomorrow and take a look at those two ships he's going to sell to the Russians. You're not trying to change the subject, are you? I said Carter wants us to come over the hangar tomorrow and look at those two ships he's going to sell to the Russians. Okay, we'll go over to the hangar tomorrow and look at those ships. Looks like you're going over to the hangar and look at some ships. <laughs> <laughs> Well, 
Well, Vic, what do you think of it? Carter, she's a pippin. You've got things on there I've never seen in a plane before. Would you like to fly it? I sure would. Why can't you? Can you get out of your contract with Consolidated? No, we have to fly that transports for the next six months. I'll say he does. Frankly, it took the President of the United States to get permission for him to fly our ship in the Stanley Trophy race. Well, how's it coming? Fastest thing around. And with this guy in the cockpit, say, we've got to get back there. Yeah. Thanks, Carter, for the offer. Well, think it over. I'm giving a little informal party night for the boys up in my place. Sort of a send-off before the races. I'll expect you boys up. Thanks, but... We'll be there. So long. So long, Carter. So long. Well, about time you put it in the pants. What held it back? Get when? Too much fog. Oh, I got some over here that'll fix that fog. Huh? Well, hello, Major. Glad to see you. Edwards, I'm glad to see you again. Major, I'd like you to know Dick Bennett. How do you do, Major? Pleasure, Mr. Bennett. It's a pleasure, I'm sure. Uh, what do you have? Oh, a scotch and soda, please. I don't care for anything, thank you. Uh, bring me a glass of water, please. Edwards, I ever tell you... Uh, yes, Major, uh, you did. I did. Oh, yes, right. Yes, you did. Well, Bennett hasn't heard it. When I was in the Philippines... Uh, Major, uh, I told Mr. Bennett. Oh, well, you did. Yeah, that's right. Oh, thanks. That's right. Oh, Carter, show Dick your view from the terrace. Yes, come along. Hey, shoot it, Major. You don't know what I got you out of when I got you out of the Philippines. I can imagine. Who is that with Bill Edwards? That's Dick Bennett. And who may he be? Don't you read the papers? Pardon me, boys. I'll be with you in a minute. Right. Hey, that's a nice place Carla has here. Sure is. Nice party, too. Hey, look out, Dick. You'll get dizzy up so high. You're right. That's too much altitude for me. Hello, will you? Bill, do you? How are you? <laughs> uh, Miss Van Every, uh, meet Dick Bennett. How do you How do, do you Mr. Bennett? Dick's on a pilot of my ship in the Stanley Trophy race. Congratulations. I've been reading about it. Say, how about a drink? Come on, Dick, let's get a Thanks, drink. Thanks, I'd love it. You would? <laughs> the Baron is going to fly my plane. Which one? For the special job. How do you like it? Very much indeed. You're going to have a lot of stiff competition. Well, I always welcome competition in everything. Hello, Gail. Hello, Lyle. I want you to know Baron Hagar. How do you do, Baron? How do you do? Say, I'm in the break. I've got to sing a tune. I hope you'll bear with me. <laughs> Hello, darling. Hello, Jean. Miss Van Avery, I want you to know Baron Hagar. How do you do? Yes. Don't miss this, Baron. It's good. Excuse me. Jack, introduce me to those two men. What do you mean, Dick? Yes, Dick. And the other one. Uh, I'd be glad to. Come on, let's get out of here before they see us. I don't mind being seen. <laughs> Come on, let's get out of here. <laughs> You're an old heartbreaker. Well, <laughs> never had much success with you. <laughs> Dick. Miss Strong, Dick Bennett. How do you do, Miss Tom? How do you do? And this is Bill Edwards. I didn't quite catch the name. Strong. Strong. My compliments. It was splendid of you bringing that child through the storm last night. It wasn't anything, just a routine flight. I phoned this morning. The little girl's going to be all right. I'm awfully glad. Would you join us? Thank you. May I get you something? No, not now. Sit down, Dick. I'm going to mix one. Miss Strong, I bought... Bill, do you think? It's nice out here, isn't it? Oh, yes, it is. Oh, it's the prettiest penthouse in New York. Oh, that's Lyle's new song. You'll like it. I don't carry military weapons, but I'm stepping mighty high. Every season, you're the reason I am in love, and in a very military manner, I am marking time, cause I know that I'm first in line in the grand old army of lovers who are marching to you. Marking time, cause you know that I'm lost in charms when I do the shoulder arms with you in the lover's review. I drill myself on love techniques so I can be at ease instead of at attention, cause you know, my dear, I aim to please. Marking time, and at my first chance, I'll salute you because I'm fired with romance. And I've got to have, and I've got to have, and I've got to have you. Me, myself, and I are all in love with you. Oh, uh, 
you sing? No, I'm a dancer. So I suspect. Lyle, play for me, will you? Me, myself, and I are all in love with you. We all think you're wonderful. We do. Mr. Uh, uh, Edwards. Oh, yes. Did you like it? I think you sing pretty fair. Well, that's very generous of you. Thank you. Oh, mention it. You didn't care for my dance? Not particularly. Is there anything you do care for in particular? Not particularly. Would you mind getting me a glass of water? How long has this been going on? Second round. Men are practically engaged. <laughs> Thank you. I like your friend Dick Bennett. Oh, you mean old Chatterbox? He is rather quiet, isn't he? And he speaks with plain. When he talks, he really says something. Well, you know the old saying, it's better to remain silent and thought a fool than to talk and remove all doubt. Oh, sit down. Just out of curiosity, why do you disapprove of me? Well, I'll tell you. I don't like people who go to Europe and toss their money around like it was confetti. It's my money. I can do what I like with it. Oh, sure. That's your privilege. It's the old routine. Fast horses, fast cars, and now fast planes. I happen to be interested in aviation. You're only interested in owning a plane. You don't care whether it's safer, more reliable, or faster. Oh, no. You own a ship, and yet you haven't got what it takes to fly. Meaning nerve? Meaning nerve. You know, when I was a kid, there were two kinds of girls. Those that would jump off the barn and those that wouldn't. Personally, I prefer those that would. And you think I wouldn't? Why don't we bury the hatchet? Where, in my neck? Hey, you forgot your water. Supercharger installed. Supercharger? Yes, I've got the usual double supercharger, but I've added an exhaust driven turbo supercharger. Say, how long is that kitty car going to be parked in here? Well, I don't know, until after the races, I guess. I've had a couple of talks with the young lady. She's all right. Oh, she is. Say, Pokey, did you check the carburetors on my ship? Yeah, it wasn't the carburetors, it was the magnetos. Say, what kind of mechanics they got out there in Kansas City, anyway? Quiet ones like you. Yeah. What? What's wrong with it? Looks all right to me. Looks like a banana split with marshmallows to me.
Hello, Pokey. Oh, how do you do, Miss Strong? This is the great Mr. Pokey, who scares everybody half to death with his daily parachute jump. Oh, now, Miss Strong, my real name is Henry Wadsworth Schultz. Mr. Schultz, someday you will wait too long before you pull that cord, my friend. Oh, uh, oh, Dick. This is, uh, Dick Bennett. We met last night. Well, this is Bill. Yes, sir, we've also met. Uh, excuse me, I will look at the plane. You must have learned your heel clicking in Peoria. Oh, no. I picked that up when I was presented at court. Court? Who bailed you out? Ha! One for the lady. Bill, this is assuming the proportions of a Kentucky feud. Yeah, cut it out, will you, Bill? Hand me that wrench. Oh, oh oui, monsieur. Avec plaisir. Uh, glad to have seen you again, Mr. Bennett. Thank you. Is that a nice way to talk to a lady? Ah, forget it and get back to work. No, sir, not me. This is my hour off for my music lesson. I'm going up in the clouds in my little umbrella where the atmosphere is not so sizzling. Why don't you try one of these jumps? It might jar some of that sarcasm out of you. Your marksmanship's bad, too. There's old Oyster McCoyster now. That son of a gun's had everybody scared to death for the last couple of weeks. Yeah. Ought to make a swell feature for the Sunday edition. Yeah. That screwball gets a kick out of taking your liver and shoving it right up in your throat when you're watching him. He's supposed to dump over a bag of flour as he falls, so I can keep on snapping him on the way down before he pulls the cord. Same old maniac. One of these days, they're gonna dig him out of the ground. Better make him cut it out after the meat. Still good a mechanic to be doing that sort of thing. My daily supply of goose flesh. I never miss seeing the little boy jump off the barn. Yes, it does take a little intestinal fortitude to dive off the wing of a plane at 15,000 feet, doesn't it? Yes, doesn't it? Yes, it does. There he goes. Oh, look at that guy sail. Come on, Pokey. Open up, you crazy fool. <sighs> Got 600 feet between him and the ground when he pulled that string. I'm a wreck. Well, he can have all he wants of it. <laughs> What's the matter with Pocket? Trying to commit suicide? Four seconds more and we'd have to pick him up with a sponge. I love to watch him, but it's unfair to organize spectators. Say, uh, 
I'm Morgan of the Daily Review. Review? Oh, oh, I'm Henry Wadsworth Schultz. Will you drape that shoot around your neck, Pokey? Oh. How long have you been making these jumps? Oh, well, when I was a little boy, yeah, I... Yeah, we know. You fell on your head. Why'd yeah, you take no. up parachute jumping? Oh, well, I've always wanted to be oh, a parachute. Just a little bit. There you are. How'd you feel after your first jump? Oh, it's... it's you kind of hold your head at this angle. There, just like that. There you are. Hold your horses. Gail, or Miss Strong. Well, gee, I'm sorry. I, gosh, I didn't know it was you. Hello, folks. Hello, er, uh, hello. Bill isn't here. No, I know. I came to see you. You did? Uh-huh. Well, uh, can I offer you anything? Got any more of that? Oh, well, sure, sure. Do you want some? Why not? I, I don't know. <laughs> There you are. Thank you. That's Bill. Yes, I know. Great guy. You know, Bill's daffy about you. He has a funny way of showing it. Oh, that's just his way. If he didn't like you, he'd be nice as pie to you. Well, that's an original idea anyway. How's the plane, Pokey? Oh, the plane. Gee, it's swell. It's a Lulu. Uh-huh. Where's the money coming from? Well, you know, Bill and Dick got every cent they own in the world in that plane, and I have too. I cashed my last Liberty Bond the other day. You know, Bill's got at least a half a dozen of his own gadgets on that plane, and they're going to revolutionize airplane building if they work out. If they work out. Everything Bill's got, he's had to fight for. He's had to scrimp and save and fight and bully and bluff to get that airplane together. I think I'm beginning to understand him a little. I love you, Bill. Well, who's that? Well, that's, that's Bill's sister. Oh, isn't she pretty? Have you any pictures of yourself, Pokey? Oh, sure. Millions of them. Here. Oh, gee. Excuse me. I'm sorry about the chaise lounge. You see, that's that's where I sleep when Dick's here. <laughs> now, don't mind me. Come on, let's see the pictures. Yeah, sure. Here you are. Oh, what's that? Oh, that? Uh, that's me, right uh, when I landed in the middle of a herd of wild bulls. What for? Well, it just seemed to be the thing to do at the time. <laughs> Well, here's a parachute on water. Where are you? I'm six feet under the parachute. How in the world did that get in there? <laughs> well, it takes a lot of fortitude to jump, doesn't it, Pokey? Huh? Uh, courage. Oh, no. No, nothing to it. You see, all you do is just bail out and count ten and then grab the ring. The ring's right over your heart. <laughs> my heart would be up in my throat. Yeah, well, then you'd probably grab your throat and choke yourself to death. <laughs> you know, I thought of that right out of my head. You're wonderful. <laughs> Oh, look. Here. Simple. You know, seriously, Pokey, that's why I came up here. Can I do that? You... Well, why do you want to do it? Oh, I have a reason. Well, there's no dough in it. I mean, you can't make any money. I don't want to make money. I want to make one jump, that's all. Just one jump. So, I think if I can get it for $40, we'll have something, but... Well, hello. This is a surprise. Yes, fancy seeing me here. Yes, fancy. <laughs> Did you come over to see how the poor folks live? Oh, not exactly. I came over to see Pokey and some of his parachute jumps. He spent most of the time talking about the great you and your ship. Hmm. Did he show you the plans for our ship? What was that? Or maybe you were interested in taking away my best mechanic. Well, I guess that's my cue for a takeoff. Nice to have seen you again. Goodbye, Pokey. You... You ought to be poked in the nose. What do you mean accusing her of trying to steal the plans for the ship and take me away from you? Figure it out for yourself. What's it all about? Just the beginning of a beautiful friendship. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid you're right. Simple, huh? 
See, that's an art. Well, of course it's an art. Now, I'll give it to you in one easy lesson. Here, hold this. There. Now, the only thing a parachute jumper worries about is how he's going to hit. <laughs> so is everybody watching him. Well, sure, that's the idea. Now, hold everything. You're getting me dizzy. Yeah, me too. Now, there are lots of pleasant possibilities, like twisting an ankle on a loose stone, and then you got to dodge trees and buildings and high-tension wires. Yeah, well, uh, suppose your chute doesn't open. Oh, well, then you got nothing else to worry about. <laughs> Wait a minute. That's the only thing a parachute jumper doesn't worry about. Here it is. First, you jump. You count ten. You pull the ring on your left chest. And then you wait until you're close enough to the ground and you begin to maneuver your shroud ropes. Oh, nice word. Yeah, just like I showed you. First on one side and then on the other until you hit the spot you're aiming at. Say, it's the simplest thing in the world. I have sailed from one side of the field to the other while I was dropping. Well, listen, how do you figure how long to wait in your delayed opening jump? Oh, well... Hey, don't you try anything like that when you're up there. <laughs> oh, don't worry. I won't. Now, look. I've got it figured out like this on paper. A body falls at the rate of 120 miles an hour, which is 1,000 feet every eight seconds. All I do when I jump is just start counting until I figure I'm far enough down, and then I pull the call. Simplest thing in the world. Here, I'll give it to you in a nutshell. Now, look. Zing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There you are. You got it? I got it. Hey, Bill, you, you're going to take off? Yeah. Better go over to the factory and get a new brake pedal. Oh, well, I, I think she's all right, but you better get a little altitude before you start out. Okay, Pokey. She didn't have any intestinal fortitude. She's going to do a parachute jump. What is Sam Hill's girl trying to do? Look at that. Why, that crazy fool, that girl's going to get hurt. If she does, it's your fault. Did you see his face? Was he worried? He doesn't like her much. Boy, the war is on. And how? Oh, that ain't no way to make a spot landing.
Are you all right? All right. I think I'm terrific. You little brat, you. You're the most asinine person I've ever met. Oh, I bet you say that to all the girls. Bailing out of a plane without even knowing how to do it. Well, at least I didn't light in a ditch. Well, you could have broken your neck. Well, so could the little girl that jumped off the barn. Well, aren't you going to help me down? You got in this. Suppose you get out of it. Hey, mister. Give me a puff. Come on, get out of that tree, you young Tarzan, you. Come on. Oh, now, no. None of your tricks. Ah, come on. <laughs> oh, you're so good to me. What you're doing? <laughs> I hope so. And very nice, too. A lot better than kissing hands. So, first you try to kill my fiance, and now you're kissing her. Your fiance? Nice work. I understand she's worth 20 million bucks. Why didn't you tell him how it happened? The night I said yes, there was moonlight. And champagne. Do you regret it, darling? I said I'd marry you if you win the race. Well, have you any doubt I will do it? Plenty. So, you think I won't win that race, huh? Suppose he is. Look what happened to him. Well, search me. He left the house an hour ago. Well, he wouldn't do a thing like this. Wait a minute. I'll telephone. See if we missed it. Okay. Hello. 
Well, let me talk to the field. He's not there? No message? Thanks. No sign of him. You go on. If he shows up, I'll bring him over in the car. Could you make it? Sure, I'm okay. Let's go. Attention, please. If Dick Bennett is in the stands, will he kindly come to the judge's box at once? There he goes. Good luck to a daring flyer. Attention, please. Attention, please. There is a change of pilots on plane number five at the starting line. Dick Bennett, Mr. Edwards, I don't want to speak to you. Which instead was that Bill Edwards, designer and builder, and controls himself. He's climbing into the cockpit. In just a minute, he will be away. Bill's going to fly his own plane. Bill's not a racing pilot. I wonder what happened to Dick. There goes Bill Edwards. Building of this plane at Lakeview Airport nearby. Protest against Baron Hagard. Why? What happened? Hagard knocked Dick out. Oh, Paul. Yeah, I don't know what happened. But I found Dick in the hangar.
Everything that's humanly possible is being done, Dick. You know that. But he's been unconscious for four days. Here's the nurse. Nurse, what does the doctor say? Oh, the doctor will be out in just a moment. Well, this is all my fault. No, it isn't, Miss Gale. Honest, it isn't. You couldn't help it. Yes, I could. I brought Hager to America. Hager will get his. That doesn't help Bill much. If I could only see Bill, if I could only talk to him. There's so much he doesn't understand. Doctor, how is he? He can't live over 48 hours. Oh, there must be someone somewhere who can help him. If he were in England, there might be a chance. What do you mean? A Dr. Crowder of London has just perfected a serum for cases like this. You say he'll live 48 hours? I would say so. Jack, I want your plane. What are you going to do with it? I'm going after that serum. All right, you can have it, but I'm going with you. Dick, to London and back, it's impossible. You love that fellow in there, don't you? So do we. Come on, Jack, let's go. How much you putting on? All she'll take. How much gas have we got? All she'll take, Dick. They're filling it up. 1,300 gallons. So long, Porky. See you day after tomorrow. So long, Dick. Pound of tea, will you? Okay. fellas. Happy landing. different from the old days, isn't it, Dick? When ships used to be made of cheesecloth, baling wire, fishing poles. I wouldn't taxi one of those crates on the ground on a bet today with a parachute on it. All eyes are centered upon the flight of Dick Bennett, crack pilot for the Consolidated Airlines, who planed out this morning for London in a desperate effort to save the life of Bill Edwards. Before taking off, Bennett said he would be back in less than 48 hours. This will be the first fight of its kind ever before attended. Good luck, Dick Bennett, and speedy return. I figure we're about halfway over, Dick. We've been out 10 hours now. That's just about right. We have just picked up by short wave the information that Dick Bennett has been sighted at the coastline in the south of England. He cut inland for Croydon, where he undoubtedly will land in a very few minutes. We will announce his arrival from the station just as soon as the news is flashed to us.
you about it. Mr. Bennett, allow me to congratulate you. Thank you, Sir Charles. Here is the serum. I talked with Dr. Harvey, who transatlantic phone this morning. He understands the treatment perfectly. You don't know what this means to us, Doctor. My contribution is very small compared with yours. A new record in transatlantic flying was established today when Dick Bennett landed at Croydon Airport, England. Hey, miss. <laughs> they made it! They made it! They're there! They're in London! They're in England! Hey! Hey, they made it! Oh, they you made what you old flying fool! Tanks are filled, sir. Good. Here's a weather report, sir. There's a terrific storm over the Atlantic, and the Air Ministry advises you wait. We can't wait. Thank you just the same, though. Man, you'll never do it. That's what they told us when we left America. Goodbye, Doctor. Goodbye, Bennett, and the best of luck. Thank you. Goodbye, Goodbye sir. Glad to meet you. news of the transatlantic flyers. Dick Bennett and George Carter, who landed at Croydon after a 21-hour flight across the Atlantic, took off almost immediately, waiting just long enough to pick up the serum and refuel their plane. The takeoff was made despite warnings from the British Air Ministry of dangerous storms now raging over the Atlantic. Look, the oil tank is fine. All right. News bulletin. There's been no further word from Bennett and Carter. Crash! No word has been heard from Dick Bennett and Jack Carter, who are battling the elements in a desperate effort to fly back from London in time to save the life of Bill Edwards. Using an awful lot of gas, Nick. Getting kind of low. Maybe we'd better throttle back a little. some hot music here. That put the radio set out of whack. Oh, gone out for that for his teeth. learned that Washington has ordered Coast Guard cutters to render every possible service in establishing contact with Dick Bennett, who is piloting his plane through terrific storms across the Atlantic Ocean. Several Coast Guard cutters steamed out of Boston Bay this morning in a valiant effort to contact the plane. You are listening to 2GC Australia, bringing you the latest news of the day. Ici Paris, Tour Eiffel. 
KJZ. Due to heavy storms at sea, all efforts to communicate with Dick Bennett have been blocked. To go from Croydon, England, after record-breaking flight. Was in a downhill of the world that Bennett a got there. But you know, I'm going to go to the world. No word has been received from Dick Bennett and Jack Carter. America's Coulter, Bennett, Irby Carter. Amateur wireless operators are requested to stand by for possible contact with the missing plane. Have you ever heard of a camp that beat at Croydon? Because of the unusual storm area they've encountered. Egon Croydon is going to go to the spot today, right? I'm going to go there, and I'm going to play out. It's going to go to the spot. Great anxiety. It's going to go to the spot. 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 Lake Peter Bennett. Lake Peter Bennett. Lake Peter Bennett. Give me the morning news. Lake Peter Bennett. Might as well fold up the tent. Those guys are gone now. Take it easy, will you? Lake Peter Bennett. Another crack like that out of you and you'll be gone. Lake Peter Bennett. Lake Peter Bennett. Lake Peter Bennett. Lake Peter Bennett. Bennett. Lake Peter Bennett. Lake Peter Bennett. Thank you, Let me call my paper, Pokey. There's no use getting sore about it. Those guys are gone. Aren't they? Thank you, Can I quote you on that? Thank you, Thank you, You ask for it. Hello? Yeah? Southfield? All ships give Bennett plane sitting down on Southfield preference. Remain in there and out the field until advised. Do you hear that? Do you hear that? What they're telling yeah. They're in. They're in. You can print that. Go away. Give me the Samaritan Hospital. Hello, let me talk to Miss Strong. Hello. Honey, it's for you. Hello? Yes, Pokey. Gail, they're here. Are you sure? Sure, I'm sure. Oh, it's them. Get the doctor. Oh, 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 Pokey, I'm so happy. Happy? Well, well, what are you crying for? You Dame Slamey. You always cry when you're happy. Name, Doctor. Shall I get her? Yeah. Just a minute. He's conscious now and asking for you. Just a moment, please. Uh, that's all right, old fellow. Just take it easy. You're going to be all right. You have some news. How's Bill Edwards? Give us a report. The serum was a success. Oh, boy, get back here. Get back here. Please. Quiet. 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 Quiet.
Remember, you're in a hospital. Oh, we... Hey, how about a little service? Oh, you too, Goofy Throttle Bender Shoe. You got any coffee for us, Mary? You bet. Coming right up. Hey, fellas. Did you read about these two going to fly across the Atlantic Ocean and back? They never make it. <laughs> 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 